Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, many of you may remember about two weeks ago we finished up with our TACOM M3 grant. And I said I wanted to create a diorama that would, would fit basically this or any other type of desert vehicle that we're going to do. So what I came up with right here is this is our Tunisian Oasis. And as you can see right here we have palm trees and a little uh, really blue water. But before you guys say, oh that water looks way too blue, I want you to have a little homework or project right here. Go on to Google right now and type in Tunisia and Oasis and look at what color the blue water looks like in those oases and it is that bright blue in a lot of the different pictures. So I thought this was a great opportunity to try out some of our water effects, do some more of a mountain effect, all those different types of things. Now the vehicle we have is just placed right in here. It's designed, this is kind of a display base that we're going to do that if you decide that you want to include the vehicle permanently in there, you can put some desert tracks and things coming out there, which you can always do later on too by using some aftermarket products. But I've made it in a way that we have basically a, a desert diorama uh, piece that we can put any types of other vehicles on just to show them off, whether it be a German vehicle, American, British, whatever on it right here. So this was a lot, a lot of fun to build. Uh, I'm going to break it down step by step for you to try to make it as easy as possible. And at the end of the video, I've also broken down every single one of the different pieces that or chem products that you'll need to build something like this. So let's get started on it. Now I have my board all ready to go here and you'll notice that we're not using a solid piece of wood but rather a board that is made up of multiple little pieces that are all laminated together. And the main reason you want to do this is to keep the board from cupping. If you were to have one big long piece of wood like this, eventually over time through from humidity or moisture or anything like that, the, the board would start to get a cup in it. Either, either way and it'll just make the all the product want to pop off over time so whereas when they laminate a board together like this it'll make a nice strong flat surface now what we're gonna do is we're basically going to kind of plan out how I plan on doing this diorama and I kind of lightly sketched right here we have our our tank here for some scale we'll put it in at this angle so basically this will be kind of like a little bit of a little bit of a trail not actually a road or anything like that then I'm planning on doing the water line going right about through here. And then back here will be our sheer rock faces that will probably go up about that tall. We'll put some, some trees, palm trees, some other type of plants growing right on the water's edge right in through here and probably in through here as well. So now that we have a general idea what we need to do, we are going to use our pink board and we're going to first cut a piece that's exactly the size of the uh, piece of wood we have. Okay, now that we have our board cut to the size, we're going to sand all this down in a minute here, but just want to take a, a big sharpie and kind of map out once again and this is just approximate now too. That is going to be our rock face. And we have once again, this will be the trail or path or even, even a, you know, like a dirt road type thing. And then we will have the water's edge. Now this last little part right here, I wanted to make it possibly look like the water is continuing on outside of the frame of the diorama. Not positive if I'm going to do that or not. The reason I say that is because if we make it into a confined little area, it'll be much easier to pour the water. We won't have to worry about damming up the side or anything, but we'll make that decision after we go along here. Now some of the remnant board that we're going to use, we're going to use that we're going to glue that into the area here draw our shape onto it, cut that there, and then we're going to Gorilla Glue that on.
Okay, so you've cut this kind of jagged edge off right here, but that won't matter because it's all going to get covered up. So now we've got to determine how much of this area we want to be deep water. And since if this is going to be our shoreline that we're going to be able to see down in there, this much of it right here will be the drop off. So we'll be cutting this whole piece right out completely here. And this way we should get a nice grade down into the deep water. And you won't even be able to see the bottom down there anyway. And with that piece gone now, now we can take our saw. And just rough in the general shape that we're going to want to get out of it. Okay, so we have our shoreline shape that is ready to get popped into place right here. This puzzle piece will fit right back in here. And then we have some of the remnants that came out of here. This is going to make up most of the, the back. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to shape this a little bit more, but I'm going to go ahead and Gorilla Glue these two up together. And we're going to go ahead and glue these two pieces onto the base. Okay, Gorilla Glue or any water curing glue that you're going to use is going to expand quite a bit. So you want to put something very heavy on it. So I put this 50 pound box of uh, supplies on it with another board on it to make sure the pressure is divided equally over the entire piece. So we're going to let this set up for a couple hours and we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I've glued in a bunch of pieces onto the, the back wall here, basically just as filler. This is going to fill up just so we're not using a ton of our uh, plaster medium on it. So we've got all of this glued into place, and now we're ready to start putting the plaster on. Okay, I'm in the process right now. I've taken uh, some Woodland Scenics uh, rock molds and cast up a couple of them using HydraCal. And in the process of putting all of the uh, sculpt mold on here, I actually ran out of sculpt mold in the middle of it. So I had to get some more of it in. And even though this dried hard right here, it shouldn't be a problem. We've sprayed down moisture on all of this entire rock face right here so we could put more of this on and just by smearing it into place we'll be able to set all of the extra stone work into place that we want to do here and just working it back and forth and the product will stick to itself pretty well even after it's dry like that you just want to make sure that it stays moist so it doesn't dry out too quickly and you can see we'll fill in all down in here too but we want to have some nice rock faces so when the if we're going to have the waterfall possibly coming down I can show you some of the pictures of the ones I found on uh, on the internet here showing the real thing and the, some of them actually do have some uh, waterfall effects going into it so what I'll do now is I'm gonna take a little bit of time and try to mold the rest of these into the rock faces even have some skinny ones here to kind of fill up the side wall here so we'll take a little bit of time doing that and I'll come back and show you what it looks like Okay, I've spent quite a bit more time actually taking uh, rock molds, 
pouring up little pieces of it, and then basically just taking and breaking up little sections of it and pushing it into more plaster. I wanted the uh, the rock surfaces to look as interesting as possible rather than just big big bob of uh, plaster. So you can see we start put rock face all up the side here, all inside of here. Now obviously it's not going to show up as easily right now because it's all white, but once we start to stain and paint all this stuff, it'll really start to pop out. Put some more rock structure here and even have like a little little crevice underneath here. So once we get all of this smoothed out and you want to really make sure you fill in all of the little areas that you don't want to have any too deep of uh, type of cracks inside of it there. And we also extended the, the the beach part right here with some more rocky outcrops right here for it. So I will spend the next about 35, 45 minutes kind of smoothing all this stuff out just so we don't have any really rough areas here. And we'll let this dry overnight and we'll come back tomorrow morning and show you what it looks like. Okay, now we're taking, as you can see here, some watered down Tamiya paint and with a foam brush we're going to start mixing some colors of browns, reds, and tans to get a, uh, a to clear off all the white basically on here. We're going to be doing more painting on but this is more or less that if we do get any type of little chip on it we won't see any of the uh, the white come through. And this nice wet mixture here and you can use different colors and we'll kind of just blot it in and use just all different types of colors. Kind of like a leopard effect. Now we're adding a little bit of a red tone because I'm trying to mimic a certain type of color of rock that we we saw. Now we're doing it wet on top of wet so the colors blend a little bit more and this is going to look quite a bit different once it dries up here too. So just using yeah, probably about three different color browns and then this rusty red color which was a mixture of to me as red and a little touch of black in it to kind of darken it up a little bit. So I'm going to keep going ahead and modeling that together and we'll come back and let you see what it looks like once it dries. Okay, now it's time to put our uh, dirt layer down while this is still drying back here. And we're going to use Mod Podge and uh, the matte version mixed with 50-50 water. And then we're just going to put a coat over all the areas that we want to have sand on. And with a nice layer of glue on, we're just going to use our sanded grout. And I have a nice tan color right here that's going to do a good job representing desert sand. And just put a nice even coat across the entire piece here. I'm also going to lay some more Mod Podge right around some of the edges of the rock. And then using some Woodland Scenics Fine Talus, actually some different grades of it, we're going to kind of sprinkle it into this area. Now we're going to put excess on here that's going to, most of it's going to get blown away later, but we do want to have some type of rock along the river or the water's edge. We're going to use some different grades of that. Then we're going to just finally take some Mod Podge, thin down with a little more water, and we're going to adhere all that by spraying all of that on there. But I'm going to put a little bit more rock on right now, and we'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's all dry. Now I've drilled a few holes into the, uh, the base to put our palm trees. 
Now these palm trees came from a previous build that uh, I've already painted and done up on there. And we will glue those two palm trees into place. And then we'll start working on some of the bushes and weeds and stuff that's growing around the edge of the water. Okay, I've, what I've done now is I've sprayed one more coat of the water and Mod Podge uh, mixture in here just to make sure everything is sealed in here before we start doing our water work. But while we're waiting for that to dry, I've started to take some, some trees and it, it's really amazing if you go online and actually just type in the word Tunisia and then Oasis. The colors and the trees, uh, colors of water, the tree types that are around these little pools of water, it's, it's really pretty amazing to do, see. So actually there are quite a few of them that are stick type trees like this, not all just palm trees that you can make little bushes. So we've started to put a few all around the edges here and we'll put a little mixture because it's not just all palm trees. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply with a little bit of uh, white glue to get all these to stick down. For the trees, I'll probably cut this one down a little bit, but we'll drill a little hole into the base, then glue it into place there as well. So we'll put a few of them here and there and uh, we'll let those dry and come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, now while the rest of that stuff dries, we're just taking a little buff and kind of just highlighting some of the rock faces here. Just to show off a little bit more detail. And the dry brushing is just putting a little paint on the brush, knocking most of it off on a paper towel, and just, just hitting the highlights on it. So I will go over that a little bit more and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now that the, uh, the bottom is completely dried, we're going to use Woodland Scenic's Realistic Water. And I've added a, a couple of drops of a turquoise dye that's safe to put inside the Realistic Water. And we're going to slowly, from the, uh, from the shallow end into the deep end, start to pour a thin layer down the bottom. Now we're going to probably have to put multiple layers of the product to get it to uh, to build up because you're only supposed to do about an eighth of an inch at a time. I've usually done a little bit more but you don't want to go too crazy so you don't have too much of a, a pull away or cracking on it. And this usually takes about 24 to 36 hours to dry. The thicker it is obviously the longer it's going to take to dry and then we can put a second coat on top of that. Okay, I've gone ahead and poured two coats now of the, uh, the water effect in the oasis area and we're letting that gradually dry. It does take quite a bit of time uh, to let it fully cure so we can put the next layer on. Now you might also notice right here too there's a little bit of a clouding effect right on that part of the beach. And that can sometimes happen with the, uh, the Woodland Scenics water. But not to worry, once it's fully dries and we put a second coat on there, that'll get covered right up on it. Also, as we put the uh, subsequent coats on, we're going to be using less and less of the water tint inside of it. And that way we'll get a, a clearer effect right around the, uh, the shore, or the beach, you know, of it. And we've also just taken and thrown our uh, M3 Grant on here just for a size reference. And so this will probably take about another three or four more days of slowly pouring the, uh, the water in there, letting it dry. But we'll, like I said, we'll probably, probably take it up probably another half an inch, quarter of an inch up higher on that. And now is also a good time that if you decide you want to put a little bit more of the, the reeds or weeds and things on the side of the waterway, now is a good time to get those put into place. And I might actually put a few more right over on this side here. I'm going to lay them out and see if I like it or not. Uh, but we'll, it, it make it have a nice effect to have it look like there's a lot of stuff, vegetation growing around it. So that's a, a basic breakdown of everything that went into building up this diorama. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do now is just before we pour our last coat of water, we're going to fill it up just about this area of the rock. 
about another maybe quarter of an inch total. I want to take my airbrush and with a little bit of darker brown, which I've just started to do, we're going to start doing the beach area a little bit so it looks like it's a little bit wetter than some of the surrounding dirt. We can also touch up around some of the other areas too with the airbrush and kind of give a little blending to the rock fix, like the little rocks in through here. Now, while we have the airbrush out too, now, like I was telling you, if you want to make this permanent part of there, you would take the tracks of this vehicle and push it into the wet plaster and stuff while it's wet. But I don't want to make that type of uh, base for this right now. So I just took some of the brown and lightly just airbrushed on what would appear to be like track marks coming from it. it it's a quick way uh, just for showing off the vehicle and you don't have to go crazy putting tracks in that way if we want to change out the vehicle Which I plan on multiple times for this. We'll be able to do it. Also, too. Don't forget after you uh, Get done doing this. Don't forget to blow this portion out very well before you put your next layer of water down Okay, so now we've poured up one more batch of the uh, the water and I've, I've done it in a separate cup here and we've added two drops of our dye to it now and we're just going to slowly from the side Now, uh, this will be self-leveling, so we're going to let that set up a little bit longer. So we've got the water all poured in now, and we have a nice uh, surface going on here. What I'll do is I'll go over and pop all of these little bubbles, uh, get those all taken care of. And it should take about 24 to 36 hours to fully cure, and then it'll be able to be see through it again. You can slightly see through it on the edge here, but not as well as it will be after it completely dries. Well, here we are. Here's our completed diorama. And one other thing I'll just point out to you is we've taken the boards and cut them up ready to do the framework on here. Just haven't had a chance to take it home and, you know, put it all together like it's supposed to be. But we'll do that at, at some other time. But wanted to give you guys a general idea of what it's going to look like. So after uh, the, all the work that we put into it, I think we have a really nice, realistic looking desert diorama backdrop. And it'll be coming really handy if you want to show off vehicles. We have on it the uh, Tacom Grant right now. But we have some other desert vehicles that would look equally as well on it there. And here we have Tamiya's Matilda. Or even Academy's little Stuart tank right there. So Now, if you wanted to put the, uh, the tracks in and permanently attach the vehicle, like I said, you could put some of the, uh, the desert product down from like Vallejo. That'll look really good on there. You put the tracks into place and then go back and airbrush it right in. And it'll also glue the vehicle right to it. But because I'm going to be using this so many times in the future for showing off some other desert vehicles, I want to kind of just leave it like that. I think it works as a good display piece. And this video is more or less designed to teach you guys how to do the rock, the water, the stone effect, all those other different things. And then it's up to you as the modeler to go ahead and put your own little spin on it. If you want to put the tracks in it, if you want to put people, whatever you want to do, I'm just giving you the basics to show you how to make a nice realistic backdrop. Kind of give you a little close up of our Azure Pools Oasis here. I think the water effect came out really nicely. You can see right down into it along the shoreline, see the rocks that are involved in that. Looks really good. And also too, if you ever did put figures and such on it, you could do a really nice looking diorama with this. Dioramas outside too and put them in natural sunlight. I think the natural sunlight with the shadows on the trees and stuff and really gives you an idea uh, what you just accomplished. And I like I was telling you, I think it does look really realistic. In fact, uh, it almost looks like the trees are blowing in the background. And here's a little close up of the uh, the water.
Okay, what I thought I would do now is give you a complete rundown of all the different products that we used in building this diorama. Uh, to start off with, we used, although it looks kind of purplish, this is pink insulation foam uh, that's used on housing. So any type of insulation foam that's, you know, carvable, things like that, that'll work fine on it. We used a uh, Gorilla Glue, and this is a water-activated glue, works really good on foam. That worked on the, uh, attaching the foam as well as the wood. Then when it came to the actual plaster, the main bulk of it was used uh, Amico sculpt mold And sculpt mold is a plaster and like a cellulose type mixture in it. I really like this one quite a bit too because it doesn't shrink at all and you don't get cracks later on in your, in your work. Now when it came to the, the rock faces, we used Woodland Scenics rock face molds. And they have some different different types that you can do and break up, chip up like that. And inside of the rock face molds, we used Woodland Scenics Lightweight Hydrocal Plaster. And this dries really fast too, takes uh, paint very well, really like it quite a bit. And these are the, the five colors that we used for painting up the rock face. And if you watch the video obviously a little bit closer, you can see the different colors and how we mixed them. So we had dark yellow, buff. A little desert yellow, red, and then NATO brown. And then just using those as a mixture to get it to, uh, to look like that. For the, the water, we used Woodland Scenics Realistic Water. And inside of that, we put just like about three drops of their turquoise water tint. And on the next batch, we'll use a little bit less than that, but that way we'll get a nice, uh, nice uh, turquoise water effect on it. The palm trees were made by this company right here. It's called Heart of the South Models, and they make all different types of uh, palm tree models for it. Now, I built those up in a previous video, but it, it's the, uh, the date palm right here, but you see how those start to turn out. And then when it comes to the, the foliage, we'll also once again use the Woodland Scenics. I use some of the field grass for some of the reeds, some of the fine leaf foliage for putting inside for the, the little trees, and actually taking little clumps of it and using it for the bushes and things on the outside and we attached everything together on there with this stuff right here, it's called Mod Podge and I use the matte one, the flat one doesn't have any gloss to it the gloss is really good if you want to do some water effects later on if you want to put ripples and things inside of it and finally this is the, uh, the product right here, Sanded Grout is what we use to get the, uh, the dirt effect on there. This works out really well too because once it gets wet and sets up, it dries to a really, really hard surface. And it really mimics the way a dirt and sand looks very well on it too. So that's what we applied all over the rest of the piece there. Thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.